And at this time, we're going to do Psalms 91. Hallelujah. If you don't have your Bibles, it's right here on the screen for you. And what we do here at EOC, we use our right hand and we place it over our heart. And we read together. So on the count of three, we'll read. One, two, three. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes in that new day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Come on and put your hands together. Christ to enter their hearts. We are called to the lost, sick, and broken. 
We are called to push individuals into their purpose and continue walking in ours. We are praisers that worship, and worshipers that praise with no distractions. We are a saved and Holy Ghost filled church that operates in the fivefold ministry. It is our desire to see people living and not just existing. Just as the caterpillar evolves into a butterfly, so shall our lives evolve into all the what we are ready to become. It is our life's mission to see you walk in your destiny and to live a fulfilled, godly life. Although you may come as you are, you will not stay as you are. Get ready, it's time to push. The University of Life Church, where the Bible meets life. Hallelujah. Anybody ready to praise our God this one? This evening, excuse me. Is there anybody ready to praise God this evening? Oh, come on, I can't hear you. It's the last day of the year, December 31st. I made a declaration. I'm going to pull out everything I got tonight. So y'all go with us. Y'all go with us. Y'all go with us. Come on, it's time to give God praise in the world. I need you to put those hands together. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Y'all go with us.
and what you've experienced, and what you've gone through, and the reason why you still got breath in your body, the only response you really got is to dance. The only reason, hey, 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 the only reason you got a you got a reason to dance. Why? The word of God says to bring it out. The Bible says this, y'all. The Bible says, thanks be unto God. Who always causes us to triumph. And by his righteous right arm, he has given us the victory. The victory ain't the important part. But thanks be unto God, it should always be unto you. You should always be thankful. But the powerful part of that is, he has given us. He has now, that may not mean anything to you right now, but if you think about all the days you thought it was going to defeat you, and that sickness was going to take you out, and the last of that family member was going to drive you crazy, and when your marriage wasn't acting right, you thought the divorce was the only option, or when the fire couldn't kill you, or when the winds couldn't take you out, or when the blood couldn't drown you, or when there was everything else that was presented. About the knowledge of Jesus Christ, there's a word that comes in my belly, and it says, Thanks be unto God, who always calls his brother to triumph, and by his righteous right arm, he has given me the victory. Thanks be unto God, who always calls his brother to leap over and jump over the wall. Thanks be unto God, who always calls his brother to live over the world, because of his righteous right arm. Thanks be unto God. Thank you. 
in the presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Come let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah to the most high. We praise God for his power and his love and his life. We come to tell him thank you as we continue on. I'm not sure about you, but I feel like I'm right in the middle of it. So I'm not going to say as we finish, I'm right in the middle of it. I'm right in the middle of it. And there's so much more. Come on. This is just where we take to have an intermission. Come on and catch our breath. Come on. This is just, we're just leaving. We're just coming in for a team hug to say, look, we are. Here it is. 
Speak to my heart. Speak to my heart. Change my mind. Change my mind. You have my undivided attention. You have my undivided attention. It's your time. It's your time. Isaiah 40 and 8 says. Isaiah 40 and 8 says. The grass withering. The grass withering. And the flower fading. And the flower fading. But the word of our God. But the word of our God. Shall stand forever. Shall stand forever. Right now. Right now. After this moment. After this moment. My life will be changed. My life will be changed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's grow. Let's grow. <laughs> so I just want to start by giving honor to God, who is the head of my life, who has ordained this moment specifically for all of us today. I would also like to give honor to our bishop. Literally 
free the Israel, well, set in motion for the Israelites to be free. And as we all read it, yeah. he did it. He said he was going to That's right, man. That's right. Amen. God is our protection. He is our healer. He's our provider, our sustainer, emotion yeah. regulator. God is our healer. Yeah. You know, the list goes on and on because God spends just so great beyond what we can even imagine. Yeah. God is also a giver. Mm -hmm. God is a giver of our best way out. God is a giver of our best solutions. Yeah. And God was even the giver of our redeemer. God is the only source that will not leave any stone unturned when it comes to being the solution. Come on. Yes. Knowing this to be true, as soon as we see a need, we should always be looking to God for Amen. that answer yes. because he is our solution. Yes. Our instant reaction when we see even a little turbulence, you know, oh, I don't know about this little deal or something, you know, the little things. Our first step should be calling on who you need God to be in that moment. Amen. God is the God of all, but who yeah. do you say God is? Yeah. Do you believe God is who you even say he is? Wow. If God removed the Israelites out of Egypt, out of over 400 years of slavery, brutal conditions, all those things, who can he be for you? We should already even know who, well, excuse me. We should know who God is beyond the limitations of our experiences. Amen. We should know him as the word also spells out for us. So, you know, he helped you pay your bill. He helped provide healing for you. But there's so much more in this book that we have never even experienced. Yeah. We have seen through other people. Yes. And again, God is everything. everything. We could ever need. Yes. God has chosen, just like the Israelites, to be I am. And his character never even changes. So you don't even have to doubt right. that whatever you think he is for you will be true. Come because on. he doesn't change. Yes. Yeah. I will end with this here. Who do you say God is? Come on. If you already have an idea, it's time to come into agreement. And believe it and let that settle in you so that every time something happens, you don't have to run scared or just confused about what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't know who God is, it's time to learn who God is. Yeah. It's time to pick up the word. Come on. It's time to go on to it's available. It's free. It's free. Yeah. To even just see what God has meant to other people. That's right. And by knowing who God is for ourselves we will be able to not box ourselves out of all of the satisfaction our Father has for us. Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. I am, and I am. God bless you. 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 Minister Shalom is coming at this time. Give God pray for Minister Shalom. And she's coming.
Um, the Amplified goes on to say, In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him, and he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Come on, yeah. And so, um, just give you a little background on this. Um, Proverbs is written by King Solomon. Solomon is the son of David, and he, after David, well, his mother is Bathsheba, um, and after King David died, Solomon reigned in his stead. He was 20 years old, and he reigned for over 40 years. Um, the study said that he reigned long, but his life was short. Solomon was also a wise man. He's, that's pretty much what he's known for in the Bible, um, for being the wisest man in the world. He was also a builder. He built um, the temple of God, um, and it took him seven years to build. So that's just a little background on Solomon. So going off of um, what Pastor Young preached, um, she mentioned something that I thought was good. She said, every promise is connected to a path. And so every promise, the promises that you have now and the promises that God will give you, it is connected to a path. So that means whatever path you take, whatever path that God places you on, this path you cannot skip out on. A lot of times we want, um, as she said, a lot of times we want the promise, but we want to skip the path. And um, something that she said that it comes with, it comes with requirements and it comes with instructions. Sometimes God gives us requirements and sometimes he gives us instructions that we don't quite understand, we don't want to do, we um, are confused, he don't give it to us all at once. Um, however, whatever, I just want to encourage you, as we end one year and go into the next year, whatever requirements that God gives you, whatever instruction that God gives you, just do it. Just do it. Simply because it's, it's, your life will become chaotic when you choose to do your own thing. When you choose to go against what God is saying, when you choose to go against what the plans that God has for your life. So whatever instructions, no matter how hard, no matter how confusing, I just want to encourage you to do it. The path you cannot skip out on. You cannot skip out on the path. She said something. She said we rob ourselves when we try to skip out on the process process that comes to work things in us and come to work things out of us. Work things in us. Maybe you're a person that needs uh, patience. It's going to come to work that in you. The path will. The process will. Maybe you need uh, um, maybe you need strength. That's going to come to work that in you. Um, it also works things out of you. Maybe you're dealing with anger issues. Right. That The path, the process, the instructions. That's going to work that out of you. Maybe you are dealing with generational things. Maybe you are struggling with demons that you don't know that's just lying dormant on the inside of you. That is coming to work itself out of you. Yeah. So no matter what it is, no matter how hard it is, I want to encourage you to go through the path, pray. And if you're like me, maybe God has already started to shift things in your life and shake, shake things up um, to place you on the path that he will have you for for this up and coming year. And so... Um, don't wait until uh, 12 o'clock. God may be trying to do something for you right now, now in this atmosphere. Yes. While Pastor was up, while while the worship was going on, while I'm up here, while everybody gets up here, allow him to do it now. Yeah. Like, don't wait to 12 uh, right. to switch paths. No, God wants to do something in you. God wants to do something through you. There's a promise attached to it. It's your promise. And, and it is, it's beautiful. At the end, it'll be beautiful. We are victorious in God. Yes, we are. Come on, Mrs. Shalom. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Amen. Minister Jessica is coming at this time. Minister Jessica. We got praise for her. She come.
Lord. I want to give honor to my bishop and my providence. And I thank you for this opportunity. Y'all just don't understand. I want to give a, you know, honor to the leaders, the youth pastor, the music ministry, the elders. Anybody that served this house, I really appreciate you. And to our business, you could have been anywhere tonight if you decided to be here with us. And I just want to thank y'all for it. So. We are going to come from um, 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. If God is saying. So it says, Then Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So Paul is talking to the church of Corinthians. And so, advantage is a superior position, and ignorant means lack of knowledge. The vice is a plan or method that is used to trick you. So, if you put it together, it says, Let Satan should not be a superior position of us, for we are not lacking knowledge of his plan or method or trick. Right. But if y'all need broken down a little bit more, got you. Come on. In international children, down, he says, I did this so that Satan would not win anything from us. Yeah. We know very well what Satan's plans are. Right. Yeah. He only came for three things to kill, steal, and, and destroy. destroy. Y'all yeah, already knew that though. <laughs> so, if any of those three things come to you, it's not God. And you need to start praying. Right. The devil does not use new tricks when he comes at you. No. So if a relationship is what you struggle with, you're going to have a million of them. Right. So you need to If a job is what you struggle with, you ain't going to have one or you ain't going to keep one. Come on. If a this will be one. This will be what you start with. Right. Yeah, there you go. You need to release those friends that make you gossip. The devil will use what you struggle with to destroy you. Yes, ma'am. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, he will. He will. And that's his device. So if you struggle with that, that's his device. You need to pray about it. Right. The thing that get us, the thing that get us an attitude, we need to stay away from it. Simple is that. Simple is that. The gospel, if there's one person that always come around you, they got an attitude, and then five minutes later, after they leave, you got an attitude. Right. And tell y'all, y'all need to stay away from me. Come on. The thing, in Ephesians 4 and 27, and the King James Version, it says, Neither give place to the devil. Uh-huh. And the international children of God, he say, Do not give the devil a way to defeat you. So it yeah. brings us to the title of the message, God being a hurdle handle. A hurdle is an obstacle. Yes. A handle is someone that takes care of something. So in this case, an obstacle someone takes care of, and then that someone is God. Yes. God will remove any hurdle in your life. Why? What are you saying, Mr. Justin? Because he's good God. He and he designed God. the hurdles. So if he designed them, he'll get rid of them for you. Right. Nothing will prevent itself in your life will have control or power over us that we cannot jump over. We may stumble, but we will not quit because God is with us and we have not fallen victims to the devil's devices. That's right. Because no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And why? Because God is our hurt and hurt. Yes, he is. Yeah. Come on, we got praise for Minister Jessica. Come on, Hannah. Praise the name of the Lord. Minister Quanta is coming at this time. Come on. All day long. To God, who is the head of my life, I want to say thank you, Bishop, thank you, Prophetess, to the youth pastors, to the leaders, every department in this church. I thank you, I appreciate you, and also the visitors. I thank you. Amen. I have a couple of scriptures. I won't be long. <laughs> okay, the first scripture comes from Hebrew 11 and 6. Come on. Yeah. 
This way, I can do some preach on December. Come on, Tim. All right. And it says, <laughs> but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that digitally, diligently seek him. The second verse, this was our second Sunday, Ezekiel 37, 7 through 9. Come on. Come on. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and I and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, yeah. bone to his bone. Yeah. The third verse, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. Right. This one prophets the young preacher. All right. <laughs> <laughs> For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returning north to thither, thank you, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sword and bread to the ear. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I, which I please and it shall prosper in the, in the thing whereto I suck it. The last verse I want to say is 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. Come on. Uh -huh. Word. But ye are a chosen generation, yeah. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. These things, it took me a while to figure out what God was trying to tell me. I asked God, what did you want me to talk about? He brought it to my marriage five years ago where you talked about the year of the promise. And I said, God, um, you want me to talk about that? <laughs> he said, yeah. Let them know something so they can understand where I'm coming from. So I want you to put your right hand over your heart. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Breathe out. And say, God, thank you for your promise. God, thank you for your promise. It took me a while to figure out how to describe this. God, what do you mean by promise? God said, I, I reminded you because... If I promise you these things, you got to be committed to what I'm going to give you. Yeah. That's, right. That's just, yes, if, if God gave me a thousand dollars, I got to go through very instructions in order to get that thousand yeah. dollars. Right. Thank you, Jesus. The thing is, for God, He's the promiser and I'm the promisee. And the thing is, how can he promise the benefits of me if I don't commit to him? That's just like, Mr. Tyler, if God said, I'm going to give you a million dollars, okay, God, I'm going to get it. God said, okay, once you get it, I need you to hold it for nine months. What you mean, God? You're going to give it to me, though, right? No, but I want you to hold it for nine months so I can keep to get birth. And through those nine months, I want you to do exactly what I tell you to do. Once you get to that ninth month, I want you to multiply. <sighs> God, I'm like, <laughs> it's been heavy on me this week, and it shows how God, who he truly is. This week, at my job, I asked, um, a customer came to my job here. You know, usual customer as usual. I say, hey, how you doing? I do the, the usual, the line. And I said, you look so tired. And she said, I am tired. I said, don't worry about it. God give you rest. Out of nowhere, she broke down and cried. And she said, thank you, because there are no good Christians like you out here. Yeah. It lets me further know that God, <laughs> the promise that God had for us, we will reap the benefits. 
This coming 2023, if you hold on to God's promise, the benefits will follow. God's not a half doer. No. He's not a half doer. He's not. <laughs> the thing is, if you want to, if you want to reap the benefits, please do not be a freeloader. If you want to be a freeloader, you might as well give it to somebody else. God will take those benefits and give it to someone else that deserves it. So I just tell you, make it short, sweet, and simple. Hold on to God's promise, and you will reap the benefits of what he got for you. Amen. Come on, good God, pray for me. So come on. Come on. Hey y'all. It certainly is a privilege to be here on this last day of 2022. First thing I got here is head of my life to our bishop and prophets. Thank you for the opportunity to say I'm here to all of our leaders. Our youth pastors, our elders, our ministers, my fellow MITs, um, everyone that serves in any high capacity here at ULC, we honor you and appreciate you. And to our visitors that are here in person, also watching online. And so my assignment was to preach out of the month of September. And so I chose to do um, a topic called He Braided Me. And so um, I'm coming from Galatians chapter 16, verse 17. I'm reading out the King James Version and also the Amplified Version. So out of, King, out of the King James Version, it says, From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Amplified Version says, From now on, let no one trouble me by making it necessary for me to justify my authority as an apostle and the absolute truth of the gospel. For I bear on my body the branding marks of Jesus, the wounds, scars, and other outward evidence of persecutions, these testify to his ownership of me. So in this verse, we see that Paul is talking to the Galatians. Now the Galatians were already believers of the true gospel, but abandoned after hearing a false one which taught them to be an example unto God, came from good works or operating out of the flesh. This calls for them to be confused and question if they should choose to experience freedom in Christ or live in bondage. From this, Paul writes a letter to the Galatians to remind them that there is only one true and living gospel, and that is salvation through faith and operating out of the Holy Spirit. He then continues this letter to remind him of the benefits of embracing this true gospel, bringing us to chapter 6, where Paul gives them the charge to serve not only God, but to serve others. And as Bishop mentioned within the whole entire kingdom series about serving, when you serve from the right posture and with the right attitude, your serving pays off. Paul then closes his letter by telling them about the greatest benefit of this gospel, by referencing back to what he wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, where he says that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yes. For the old has passed away, and behold, all things are made new. Now keep in mind, Paul was a prosecutor of the church, and it wasn't until he had a revelation from Jesus Christ that he was transformed. Or if you remember the term that Robin said it was a couple weeks ago, translated, he became a new creature. Bearing the evidence, keep in mind evidence, of it on his body to symbolize he belonged to God and not his former life. So what does this mean? When we became translated, there was evidence to show that we belong to God. Right. Now it may not be physical marks like Paul, but think of it as God giving you his stamp of approval to say, this one is mine. Come on. Come on. So basically, we're in the kingdom, we belong to the king. Yeah. And it's because of that, we belong to him, we represent his brand. We do this by representing and representing him in every area of life. 
So think of yourself as a brand ambassador for the kingdom. By definition, a brand ambassador is a person engaged by an organization or company to represent his brand in a positive light, helping to increase brand awareness while embodying a corporate identity and appearance, demeanor, values, and ethics. Now, believe it or not, Paul tells us this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, that we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. We're called to appeal his call so that others may be reconciled back to him. So, with that in mind, we have the task of sharing who God is so that the lost, sick, and broken can be found, healed, and made whole. So, here's the thing. Even though we have this assignment, we also have to get into remembering that we are the first and possibly the last introduction of Christ that a person may have. So what you say and what you do yes. matters. Yes. Why? Because everything you do is a reflection of who you represent. Yes. So if that if that's the case, then my actions determine if I add value to the company. Yes. So with that in mind, I want to ask you two questions for you to think about. First one, am I helping to advance the kingdom or destroy it? Right. Right. Second question, am I an asset? Or a liability. As a kingdom citizen, our goal is to always be an asset and never a liability. Now, I'm not here to say that every day is going to be perfect. We all know enemy will try you, people will try you, challenges will come. But you have to be able to push past those challenges and fulfill the assignment that God has created you to do. And it all comes from knowing your identity, first off. When you know your identity, you know your responsibility in the kingdom. And when you know your responsibility in the kingdom, you know that it's no longer I. Basically put, it's all in your knowing. And when you know better, you do better. You love better. You give better. You serve better. Everything gets better. Everything should be better. So in my closing, we should count it as a privilege to be branded by God. Simply because he branded us so you can tell his story and for him to get glory. Thank you. Come on, to be branded by God. Minister tomorrow. Hallelujah. Minister Danny is coming at this time. Danny Mori. You got praise for her as she comes? First thing honor to God whose perfect love we will never get to know, but we always get to experience. To the amazing and authentic leaders of this house, Bishop Beecher, Great Prophet is the honor. To our visiting pastor, Pastor Sherry, UFC is always blessed when you enter our presence. So I honor you today. To the ULC family, thank you for supporting us and doing this. To our visitors and all of you, my father's children. I get the privilege and honor of speaking on the topic of open your mouth and let me out. Come on, so Bishop Bridget talks this lesson into the Kingdom series. And that series was to push us to develop and transform ourselves more so that we are kingdom-minded sentences that will bring God's will to fruition on this earth. Open your mouth and let me out was brought from the story of the Hebrew prophet Jonah fleeing from God's instructions. If you're a trivia person like I am, you do know that Jonah was the first and only prophet to run away from God's instructions. But that's Google for it. Uh, the book of Jonah is a short, sweet, but strong account of Jonah's extraordinary experience with grace, compassion, and the love of God. So the verses for that was Jonah 1, verse 1 through 4, and verse 17. And then we went over to verse, uh, Jonah 2, verse 1 through 2, and verse 10. Now the word of our Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amite, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come upon before me. But Jonah rose and fled to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was to be broken. Down to verse 17. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. 
We're going to flip over to Jonah 2. It says, Then Jonah prayed unto the God unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell I cried and thou heardst my voice. Verse 10 says, And then the Lord spake to the fish and it vomited out Jonah upon dry land. Quick recap, Jonah received clear instructions to go from God to go and to operate in the assigned territory that he was given. But Jonah's fear caused him to run away to be disobedient. So he boards the ship to Tarsh, which is the opposite direction of Nineveh. And then later in the text, there comes a raging storm that calls the crew to find the problem and then throw Jonah overboard. He is swallowed by a great fish that was appointed for him. In its belly for three days and three nights, Jonah finally cries out and repents his sin to God. Then God speaks, the fish vomit him up on dry land so that Jonah can do what he was instructed to do. God created us on purpose, with purpose and for a purpose. And he has assigned us places to operate and reign in, but we must follow the instructions to get there. Yes. No one yes. and nothing can stop us from the place God has designed for us and destined for us, but us. God is sending out clear and concise instructions to his people this day. You don't have to go through prophets. You don't have to go through all these people. He is talking to you clearly. The instructions are not up for debate. We must ask ourselves, why are we not walking in what God told us to do? Is it due to the fear that leads to disobedience? Or, we are, or do we have the maybe later syndrome? We're right. doing what we want to do. Right. Our disobedience is dangerous to us and to others around us like Jonah on the boat. Right. Yeah. In Jonah 1, 5 through 16, it tells the story of how Jonah gets on the boat and a raging sea comes in to destroy the boat. The, the men did not know why this was happening. They have been doing what they always did. And now suddenly something happened. And so we have to ask ourselves, well, they're at the end, you know, they, jump, or they figure out why Jonah was just so content while the big storm was raging and they really realized it was Jonah and they threw him off the boat. We have to ask ourselves, what has God done in your life or around you to get your attention that you're not following his instructions? Right. We have to break the mindset that God cannot use us. If God can use snakes, rabbits, frogs, donkeys, he can definitely use us. The assignment is given to us, and it can be intimidating. But if we keep the heart and mind posture of simply pleasing God with, with everything that we do and everything that we have every day of our lives, then we can accomplish whatever assignment God gives us. As believers, and especially leaders, we have to make sure that our behaviors and our disobedience does not hinder anybody else's life. Other people's deliverances, miracles, healings, and etc. are connected to our obedience. If we don't do what we are instructed to do, when we are instructed to do it, we can hurt ourselves and we can definitely hurt our witnesses. We have to grasp the concept that obedience is better than sacrifice. We have gone through and we put others through so much unnecessary drama, hurt, and pain, all because we disobeyed the instructions. Jonah 2 shows us that no matter where we are in our well situation, God hears us and he still answers us. Yeah. He will never leave or forsake us, even in our disobedience. Yeah. When God spoke and the fish placed him on dry land, Jonah went and completed the assignment. God's unlimited love and compassion for us will always make sure we're in a workable place to do the work when we agree with him fully. All of us are like Jonah in one place of our life when we have read from the instructions. Right. We all have to understand and know that we are anointed and we have a purpose. God has given you some things to do that only you know how to do. It is up to us to decide to get up, get out, accept and complete the assignment God has given us. We do have territory that we reign in. We are all one decision away from coming out of whatever situation our disobedience, our rebellion, or our fear has put us in. Allow God to guide your steps and trust the clarity of his instructions he's given you. Believe that he qualified you and know that there is something that he has placed on your heart. He will help you achieve it and he will be glorified in the process. Yes, Seek God, get in his presence, and hear from him. His love and instructions for you have not changed and will not. Will not. Choose to come out and follow God's plans for your life. Like Elijah hid in the cave because of his fear for his life, God called him out in the cave in King, 1 Kings 9 and 19. God is calling us to come out of the cave and go forth and never to go backwards. He has provided all that we can ever need. We just need to trust him and follow the instructions. Come on! Come on, y'all. Get me to bring up the world on the hip-hop. Open your mouth and let me out.
Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now exhale. All y'all better preach. Exhale. Young guys, man, have y'all been enjoying these ministry, these preachers? Amen. Minister B. Air is coming at this time. Always there. Yeah. 
So in First Corinthians chapter 10, Paul talks about how there are things in life that um, has happened as warning through it all, but God still protects his children through it all. Yeah. So while studying the word, God gave me the revelations that most times we know someone to, can keep us safe because of our experience of them. So take a moment and think about your think of an experience where God kept you safe. Some of us may say, um, even be able to say that we didn't feel worthy of being protected, but God still covered us anyway. So in my case, some of you know, I went through like a little smoky phase. I don't plan on my foot. <laughs> but I went through that phase. Um, and what I can say is that I didn't look like it. I didn't act like it. I didn't smell like it. But <laughs> coming out of it, it's because I had God's protection through it all. Yeah. God showed me the ultimate protection, and I was able to defeat a uh, stronghold. Not only was I able to think about that, but I was able to think about this year, the many experiences that I've had with God this year. Um, and through all of those, he protected me through it all, whether it was the smallest thing, like walking to my car, making it home, Say or the biggest thing, like my pregnancy this year, which Amen. that's a whole other thing. But um, I'm sure many of you can reflect um, on, on the time to where God covers you. And although the, may, the situations may be different, God remains the same, yes. present. So I need to give you one question. You ask me, that's a lot of questions, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave with you. What does your experience say about God? My experience to say that he's a protector, that he's a healer, that he's a deliverer, that he um, that he's an ultimate protector. And it's like, Amen. Come on, y'all. Give God praise for the rest of the air. Safety first. We're going to hear now from Dr. Taisha Rocker. She's going to call. Minister Dr. Taisha Rogers. Doctor. Seeking whom he may devour. 
You see, every time we make a stand for Christ, we will find opposition. Right. Right. And we have to use God's weapons if we're going to survive against the enemy. Yeah. You know, there are some cars that use different types of gas. Each vehicle, you have to have the right kind of fuel in order for it to work. Right. You can't run a gasoline car on hydrogen. And you can't put gas in an electric car to make it work. The same is true for the battles we face today. We can't go into spiritual battles with natural armor. That's right. We can't go into spiritual battles with inappropriate armor or armor that doesn't fit. That's right. Remember um, when David went into battle to face the lion, he was offered King Saul's armor. But he wasn't able to use it because it didn't fit. It was too big. Um, he wasn't comfortable with it. Yeah. So if he would have tried to face Goliath wearing someone else's armor, he would have lost the battle. Come on. Right. But that's how some of us show up to our spiritual fights. Right. We aren't prepared. Not we aren't dressed properly. Not. We make social media statuses instead of praying. Or Come we on. Or we Come fear on. our opposition instead of accepting God's peace about the situation. Yes. Right. So in this message, we should remind us to stay dressed and to stay ready so that when we show up to a fight, we are prepared and we are ready. So I want to just briefly remind you how to stay ready. Further down in Ephesians, Paul tells us exactly how to prepare and how to dress for battle. He starts in verse 14 by telling us to wear the belt of truth. Yes. To defeat the enemy, we must always start with the truth. Our integrity matters. Come on. Without integrity in all that we do, we will lose the battle against the enemy every time. He then tells us to put on the breastplate of righteousness. A breastplate covers the heart, and righteousness protects the heart. Sin tempts us in many different ways, but righteousness shelters us from it. Come on. The enemy Come on. wants to get into our hearts and into our minds, and he's looking for cracks in our armor. Yes, he is. And don't be fooled, he knows exactly where those cracks are. Come on. But the breastplate of righteousness guards our hearts. Yes. From pride and from sin, because our hearts must be clear before God in order to win the battle. After that, he mentions the gospel of peace, and peace reflects God's character. God isn't anxious. He isn't fearful. In Ephesians, we are repeatedly reminded to stand and to stand firm. Yes. If the enemy can make us anxious, we will be shaken and unable to stand firm. Come on. If Satan wants to disrupt our peace by throwing obstacles our way or putting doubts in our minds, our peace is ruined when we carry around anxiety and worry, but we must remain anchored in peace. And God gives us peace. Through him and in him. Uh, Next he talks about the shield of faith. The enemy is going to fire flaming arrows or sow seeds of doubt in us. He wants to place doubts in our minds about God and about his truth. So during my study, I found out that Roman soldiers used to carry these heavy shields and um, they were made of animal hide. And before a battle, they would dip their shields in the water so that when the wet animal hide, would, or so that the wet animal hide would extinguish the fiery darts that were thrown at them by the opposing army. Well, we can give our shield of faith in the water of God's word in order to save our Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Paul goes on to tell us to take the helmet of salvation. A lot of the battles we face start in our minds. Yeah, that's if right. our heads and our minds are wounded, we won't be able to think clearly. We must have the mind of Christ to win the battle. Yeah. And we must also have at all times the assurance of salvation. Yeah. Lastly, Paul tells us to take the sword of the Spirit. The most effective weapon is the sword of the Spirit yeah. because it's the Word of God. Yeah. It's the only piece of armor that has both defenses and offenses. Come on! Come on. Yeah. Jesus modeled this when he was tempted in the wilderness. When the enemy tried temptation after temptation against him, Jesus used the Word of God to protect himself. Jesus answered the devil's temptations three times in Luke with God's word and the enemy was defeated. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4 and 12 says that the word of God is alive and sharper than any double-edged sword. So when Satan uses, so when we use the word of God, we can surely defeat Satan's lies and attacks. And attacks. Then Paul tells us to pray. After he teaches us how to show up and how to dress for battle, he gives us another strategy to win. Bishop mentioned that we must prepare for war in a time of peace. And this is where prayer comes in. Come in prayer and studying God's word is where we gain strength for the battles, of he battles ahead. Spiritual battles require spiritual strength. When Paul says to be strong in verse 10, he wasn't talking about physical strength, but the inner spiritual strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Come on. God has a plan for our lives, and the enemy has one too. 
we just have to decide which voice we're going to listen right. to and who we're going to choose yeah. to follow each day. Right. If we don't make a determined choice to follow God, we will eventually fall into one of the traps set by the enemy, which is why putting on the armor of God is so important. Yeah. And it's our spiritual defense against the attacks by Satan. The only thing about the armor, though, is that we have to actually put it on. Right. It's available for us, but it's up to us okay. to put on the belt of truth and be intentional about living a life of integrity. You know, I never walked in my closet and just had my clothes jump out at me. I had to carefully and strategically select my outfit and shape. Right. I had to check the weather to see if I need rain boots or right. a jacket. Right. The same is true for the armor of God. If you wear the sword of the spirit and fail to put on the breastplate of righteousness, it means that your heart is open to be attacked. Come on. So I would like to close by asking you to examine how you've been dressing. Yeah. Have you been wearing the full armor or have you failed to put on the key piece? and allow the enemy to have an advantage over you. Come on, somebody. Give God praise for Pastor Minister Taisha Rogers. Put on the whole honor of God. Minister Missy is coming now. You know, see, we ain't got no other go. We got church tomorrow, so we got time for all of this. Somebody say, I know you're right. That's right. Great job. Bridge minister. Yes. 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 I'm coming from the month of August, um, and Bishop talked in this month too as well. Um, and I'm gonna do a little mixture of two topics for two Sundays. So I am Kingdom, and uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, and um, full access. Full access. Yeah. Yes, and we're going to start with Luke 17:20. Come on. 
We are the kingdom citizens. Yeah. We have kingdom citizenship. Yeah. Okay? And he's threatened by our king, God kingdom now. God kingdom citizenship. And he wants us believing that we can have dual citizenship. You can't like, have dual citizenship in America or China or you know, somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? But no, that's not how it works in spiritual right? To, to gain full access in the kingdom of God, you have to be only a part of the kingdom of God. Because we know that it says in Revelation 11 15, all other kingdoms will become the kingdoms of the Lord God. Okay? So having the kingdom of God within you, there's work to do. Okay? Just like we have to go to work to make that money, so we can have money to go to the grocery store and have full access to the food, right? So we need to work and um, do this business for the kingdom of God. And that is, we need to study the word of God and we need to feed our spirits. For full access, okay? Yeah, full access. And so that whatever we ask in Jesus' name that he will do, that's John 14 and 14. And also in John 14 and 11 it says, believe that we will do greater works. Yes. Since we will do greater works, uh -huh. we got to get this work, okay? Come on. Okay? So we have to be about our Father's business, okay? Yes. So it says, I'm going to turn to uh, Luke 4, 18 through 19. Yeah. Okay? Come on. <laughs> All right. So, Luke 4 and 18 and 19. It said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, that's our work right there. We need to get out and do this work. So, uh, I'm going to leave y'all with this. Let's be about our Father's kingdom business because he has granted us full access with kingdom citizenship so that we may work with the power within us. Come on! Come on, we're not praying for this to miss it. Kingdom access. We got Hey, Amen. Minister K is coming at this time. Give that praise for Minister K. Message is in that month. 
So, y'all, why was only one message? One sermon, the whole woman. I said, I'm on the media team. Why we only got one message? The whole woman. But why was the sermon, the name of that uh, sermon, it was titled Destroying the Voice of Fear. I said, all right, God. <laughs> I said, okay. So if you want to grab your Bibles tonight, I will be coming from 1 Kings 19, 1 through 5. And it reads, Bye-bye. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, uh-huh. and withheld all he had slain, all the prophets, with the sword. Uh-huh. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make thy life as thy life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Rashida, which, is, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. And that's where Bishop stopped, but I wanted to go a little further. He said, it says, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Yes. So in case you've never read um, this book before, I just wanted to um, give a little bit about it. So Jezebel and Ahab is married. And Ahab is a king, and he's considered to be a bad king. And that's mostly because he condones a lot of the things that Jezebel do. She don't like religious people or anything like that. So if you look at verse 1, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and he killed the prophets with the sword. And the way that I looked at this, and if you married, you understand, I said, oh, they married, so they was just talking. And, and, and um, Ahab was telling uh, uh, Jezebel everything that he probably heard, and somebody said, so he ran back, and he said, baby, let me tell you what happened. And why he tell her that, I have no idea, because he already knows she don't like anybody religious. So then Jezebel said, oh, okay. I'm going to send somebody, and I'm going to tell them, go tell uh, Elijah that I said, when I see him tomorrow, I'm going to kill him. Right. Right. right? right. So then Elijah was like, oh, okay, I'm out. I'm running. <laughs> Elijah ran. And this is where we see fear. This is where the fear happens. So then verse 4, he ran for a full day. Yeah. And then he stopped under a uh, tree. He sat down to get some shade. And when he sat under that tree, he said, all right, God, I'm done. I'm tired. Well, you take me, not her. You take me now. Mm-hmm. And if I'm being honest, we've all been here. Because that's where fear started to set in and it, it consumed his mind at this point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So we've all been there, right? Yes. And in me, personally, I've been there recently. Recently, the doctors told me that I had what's considered postpartum depression after having my son. And I believe in postpartum depression. But, you know, we're a church that believes in Jesus and therapy. Right. right. Yeah. So after having my son, they said I had postpartum depression. And then three months after that, my husband got a job offer to travel. And this is his dream. So he went. And I was doing good. I was on the road. I was coming to church. I was fine. I was like, okay, God, I got this. But then three or four months after that, I was like, okay, God, I was right where Elijah was. I was like, all right, God, you're going to take me now. And after attempts, and then after another attempt, and then after another attempt, you see it didn't work because I'm still here. So God said, I'm still here. Yeah. So then we get to verse 5. Verse 5. That's where God sent an angel and shook him. He said, shake him and wake him, saying, get up, eat this food, and drink this water, basically because you got work to do. Work to do. Yeah. And there was many times that I was under that tree, and then my bishop and my prophets, they had to call me, and they said, get up, you got work to do. One of the words I'll never forget that my bishop called me, and he said, I won't let you die in that house. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So bishop titled his sermon, Destroying the Voice of Fear. Yes. And in his message, he referenced Jezebel as the voice that gave Elijah fear. I want to ask you, who or what is your voice of fear? Right. Is it family? Come on. Is it Good. friends? Come on. Because if you're being honest, you don't realize that the people close to us sometimes can be causing the fear in our life. Yeah, right. For example, you can say, I'm starting a business. And then they'll come with, girl, how are you selling dinner? You ain't no chef. 
Yeah. You don't have a certificate. Girl, how you starting a boutique? Yeah. You don't even know how to dress. Yeah. Like, how you gonna wash cars? Your car always dirty, right? Yeah. And we don't even realize that it's, it's, it's consuming us. Right? Yeah. So even though you know that this is a God giving gift, something that God told you to do, now you sitting at your computer, you're supposed to be researching your business, but now you right. sit there scared right. because you don't want to do the business because all these people have spoken to your life. Right. 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 So imagine what would happen in and for your life if you replace the word fear with faith. Right. Yeah. So you start replacing fear's friends because it does have friends uh -huh. with the friends of faith. You replace insecurity with security. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's Philippians 4 and 13. You replace jealousy with love. Do everything in love. Corinthians 16, 14. You replace doubt with belief. God saved you by his grace when you believe. Ephesians 2 and 8. You replace rebelliousness with obedience. Be cold. To obey is better than to sacrifice. 1 Samuel 15, 22. See, what we have to realize is fear is only a lack of faith. Yeah. And as Bishop said in his sermon, are you really a believer if you have no faith? You see, our word tells us whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive in faith. Amen. Fear is only a tool of Satan. And he uses this tool to stop our confidence in Christ. Right, right. Once he stops our confidence in Christ, he flies in, and he can whisper in your ear, and he can get you to a weak place. Right. And I'm not saying weak as in you're sick and in, in your body hurting, all that type of stuff. I'm saying weak in a way have, that you haven't been studying so you don't know your word. Right. Or weak in a way that you haven't been praying or you don't, so you haven't been talking to God daily so you don't know his voice. But when you're weak, you fall for Satan's trap. Right. Yeah. So let's go back to the scripture a little bit. Jezebel voice, it carries so much fear and so much weight that even speaking through someone else, it still scared Elijah. What's scaring you? Who's scaring you? Yeah. And is it coming through somebody else? That's right. gossip. Yeah. Right, right. And yeah. even when Elijah said, God, I'm done, God didn't give up on him. He sent an angel yeah. to lift him up and to get him up. Yeah. Who in your circle lifting you and getting you up? Right, right, right. But now we got to ask ourselves, right? How many times have we been, how many times have we operated in the spirit of Jezebel? How many times have you been the voice of fear in somebody else's life? Come on. You got to repent for that. Come on. We have to remember that fear, it can and it will destroy everything that's connected to you. Yeah. So now we got to call it out. And we got to cast it back to the pit of hell where it came That's from. That's right. That's right. So in closing, Bishop title was destroying the voice of fear. But if I was to add a title to this, I would I would call it replacing fear with faith. Yeah. yeah. Come on, give God praise. Replace fear with faith. Come on, give God praise for us okay? At this time, it's giving time in the house of the Lord. I'm going to take just a little break out because I want to be found giving when the clock strikes 12. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Uh, you guys have done amazingly well. I'm talking about great, 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 awesome job. And we, we are more excited about what's to come. We have about, uh, what is it? How many more we got? Oh, six more. And they are ready to bring the fire. I'm ready to hear it too. Amen. Listen, you can turn the lights up. If you need an envelope, lift your hand real high and somebody will come around and they will serve you. If you need an envelope, if you're watching online, amen, we, we want to invite you to be a giver with us on tonight. You can get this and clean for the next second. Anybody watching? Okay, for the second hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the second hand. There's something. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. And, and 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 we want to invite you to do that. I want you to get watch this. We are not having service tomorrow. So what we would have done tomorrow, what tonight and tomorrow, we will do that now. We will do that now. Will a man rob God? Yes, he will. And he will do that in the time and offer. So I'm gonna ask you, as the Lord has requested, required, and commanded us to give. Uh, uh, and to give your tithe tonight, 
uh, as the Lord has requested and commanded us to give. Watch this. If you need to give uh, by debit or credit card, you're going to see um, uh, Elder Javaris. He's going to be waiting for you at the back of the building. So if you need to give by debit or credit card, Elder Javaris, and uh, he's waving at you now. He's going to meet you in the back of the building. If you don't know who he is, Theo, just go to the back and he'll see you. Uh, he'll, he'll find you. You'll find him. You'll see him clearly uh, on tonight. So we're going to give good. We're going to give good. We're going to give unto the Lord as the Lord has required us to give. I, what we'll do, yeah, you guys can just come to the front. And as you are praying, we also have uh, 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 Brother Chris is going to give us a dance real soon. Chris, you know what he's here? He's going to minister and dance. We're excited about that. Amen. And then, of course, the mantra you will see is still coming. You don't want to leave. You don't want to see it online. You want to experience it firsthand for yourself. Amen. Amen. So I say, you, you want to say a lot of things. Oh, I'm sorry. There are many different ways you can give here at ULC. Those ways are on the screen. You can give by Cash App, PayPal, Venmo. Uh, uh, so whatever way God needs you to do that, do that. All I'm asking you to do is to obey the voice of God. That's it. I can call out a hundred scriptures, but if you're not willing to obey, come on, because the blessing is it, it is in obedience. Amen. And I want you to know that this is good ground. If you're watching online and you need a place to sow it to, this place is good ground in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Once you heard from the Lord, you can stand all over the building, but take your time as the musicians play. Amen. And we're going to give all together shortly.
nobody has ever uncertain you. You don't have to move.
told you you weren't gonna be in my teeth catching. You ain't no preacher, that's what the devil said. You, 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 you messed up too much in, and you've done too many things that God can't use you. The devil is a liar. You showed the devil tonight that God can use everything. Watch this, because nothing in your life will be wasted. Too many. And nothing this year. I ain't trying to make you pray, but you got to be grateful for yourself. And everything, all of the affliction, everything you've suffered this year, God is going to use it for his glory. Nothing in your life shall be wasted. Touch by people and say, nothing shall be wasted. God is going to get glory out of that. God is going to get glory out of this. God is going to get glory out of this.
The lust of a job couldn't take your life. The lust of friendships and relationships couldn't take your life. But God says, I got a plan. And the weapon that formed against you and did not have the power to prosper. So we give God glory.
Amen. We can rescue you. We can rescue you. We can rescue No need to talk about what happened. God has healed you from that. Let's move forward. Moving forward. Back books together. In Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and celebrate the Lord. Come on. At this time, we're going to go a little further in our in my team's ministry. Yeah. I think we have them coming and then in between that we want to experience a powerful dance demonstration by Brother Chris and then we want to hear the mantra. Amen. 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 Minister Dee Brown, she's going to come. Worship. Keep the atmosphere. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I thank God for this day. Just torturing him and everything. 
And I seen the boy trying to say something because if he ever had ever been around anyone that could not say anything, but uh -huh. Uh -huh. it's a voice, a very unusual sound that they make. Mm -hmm. They can't say anything. Yes. And when God begins to show me this, us, how the enemy try to come and choke the life out of us, mm -hmm. try to choke the word of out of us. Every time we open our mouth, even when we say Jesus, you better believe the enemy is right there. Anytime the word comes forth and you begin to speak the word out of your mouth, the enemy is right there. But when God begins to show me this, I remember Bishop Benson said, write down dumb and deaf. Oh, it's two words, but I'm telling you something. Yeah. This deaf and dumb spirit right. will cost you your life. Yeah. This deaf and dumb spirit will talk to you and tell you to kill yourself. And see, you don't come there all of a sudden. What happened is, is God is talking to you, and you hear him. You just turn that deaf into him. You don't want to hear it. He tells you to do something. Uh-uh, they won't talk about me. And you continue to do that. What happened is, you become deaf. Now you're in a place you can't hear from God. Well, God has not said anything to me in a while. Oh, yeah. He's talking. Can you hear me now? You know how sometimes we're on cell phones? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? And you may have a whole conversation. Like, I didn't know he was off his phone. Now, what was the last thing I said? Can you hear me now? God knows if you can hear him now or not, but he wants you to know if you can hear his voice. And then you get to the place where you don't speak the word of God. Now, you become dumb mute. You begin to speak the things of the enemy. You begin to speak things like, I'm a failure. Then that low self-esteem begins to sit in, I'm ugly. I'm too big. And then you have the, the, the people of God, like, you're so beautiful, you're so handsome, you're so annoying, you can't even see that. Or you can't even hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you. And now you're in that place of now you frustrated. Right. You come into church. Right. And that foul spirit, it stinks. Right. It's wicked. Now, I don't know if you ever been around anybody that dressed up really good, uh -huh. smelled so bad, uh -huh. put on a lot of perfume to cover it up. You come to church, you wave your hands, and all this foul order, you go into the nostrils of the Lord. You want a fresh aroma. Right, right. That five spirit. The five spirit may look good, but it don't smell good. And if you have any deserve of spirit, you know when you see it. Hallelujah. Now, you're here now you're in a place like, God, what must I do? And sometimes God will come to you and he'll send somebody where they have to come and pray you through, that they will have to intercede for you. And I have been in a place where God has had to pull me out. It was just that bad that he had to come and carry me out. Because I got to the place where I became mute. I could hear the Lord's voice. I went to the church. I sung in the choir. I sung on the praise team. I even preached. But God, he seemed were right there with me. And when this boy had the spirit in him, and then the father was like, you know, I, I talked to the disciples, see if they can do it, because y'all hate around Jesus, right? I mean, for real. Mm -hmm. So I know y'all can deliver this boy, my son, from this evil spirit that caused him to be done to death. They can do it. All right. And God began to show me. And the question he asked me, and this question for you all, God said this. He said, You've been walking with me for a long time, for years, and you yet not believe me. And to bring it on home, you have been going to ULC for a mighty long time. The word go down in the house. But why have a change taking place? Because we come down the deaf ear, mute, we don't hear. I don't know how people have a lot of weights in their ears. They go with the ears flushed out. Then some of us meet that on tonight. Hallelujah, God. Wow. And so when God began to 
revealed this to me. And the tears began to come down my face. And I found myself, I said, Lord, God, you forgive me. And you notice that God, he, Jesus called the spirit by name. See, we dealing with some stuff, we don't even know what it is. Right. And God will give to you what it is. You have to call it by name. Yeah. If it's cussing, if it's lust, whatever type of lust it may be, you have to call it by name. Because I can remember a time when Elijah, he was on it that day. And in, my, in our home, we don't do like time out and sit thinking over. So you go sit there, think about what you have done, and come up with something else. What did you do? So anyway, he was really on this day. I was frustrated. And so one of us, okay, you just go to think it over. Just go to think it over. And then the Lord began to show me what was going on. It wasn't him. The enemy was trying to use him to get to me. And I said, Elijah, I said, what well, mama's going to do? It ain't got nothing to do with you. I opened that door. I said, you old frustrated spirit, you come out right now in the name of Jesus. He said, oh, no, 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 please don't put me out. I said, Elijah, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the spirit. <laughs> and I began to call some more spirit. He was like, oh, no, please, please, I do right, I do right. And I said, Elijah, once again, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to this spirit. And I told the devil, I said, you're going to get your clothes. You're going to get your toothbrush. You've been staying here too long. You have to go. You have to go. And I can remember being in a place this year where the enemy tried to spiritually take me out. But a long time ago, I told the Lord, I said, give it up. It's an option. It's not. So what I had to do, I had to write down the word of God. And this is... This might probably be for some of you all. I had to write the word of God down in my tablet. Every single day I read it. And once I read it, I signed my name to hold me accountable. And tears in my eyes. I didn't feel like reading the word, but I knew what the enemy was trying to do to me. I knew. I understood what he was trying to do to me. Every single day. I did that. And I did it up until I received my deliverance. I didn't stop coming to church. I still worship the Lord. I would come to the house of God and say, Lord, I'm not worried about what I'm going through because I got this because you got this. Lord, I'm going to worship you because somebody might probably just need that on today. On today. But God, he wants to deliver you. He wants to restore you. It's nothing too hard for God. Whatever it is that you're facing in your life, God, he will let you know. Or he may send somebody else to you like this is what you're dealing with. And you begin to speak to that old nasty spirit. You tell him he has to let you go and don't return anymore. Don't return anymore. And the enemy, he will try to bring you back up. He's going to try to tip you with it. But you have to deal with it right then and there. Don't ponder on it. Don't let it linger. You have to deal with it right then and there. And when God talking to me, sometimes I say, oh, I hear you, Lord. I hear you. So can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So you can say, yes, Lord. I won't be rebellious anymore. God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. And I'm going to end with the scripture. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 5. It says, The Lord God had opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. Neither turned away back. So this is the place where we have to be. Stay in it. 2023. Yes. This is our year. Amen. Come on. Amen. For the Lord of God. Minister D. Hallelujah. Minister Kathy Ivy is coming at this time.
confidence, having shared youth pastors, family, elders, ministers, visitors, my mom. Amen. Amen. So when uh, Minister Lee got up here and she, you know, said hugs, you know, I'm not
a moment to imagine God reaching his hand down to lift you up from that place. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 50 and 40 says, let's just go here. All right, all right. Come on, walk your tongue. It says, the Lord God had given me a tongue. Hang on, two seconds. Okay. The Lord God had given me a tongue. And of the learn that I should know how to speak the word in the season to him that is weary. He the wakening morning by morning he waketh my ears to hear as the learn. Yes. The Lord is about to wake your ears. When God awakens your ears, which also means unclog your ears, do not allow his oh. word to fall on dead ground. Every instruction that you hear from God, you need to move and move fast and yes, act sir. quick on it. I need you, I need us to understand that our ears are so important and so powerful. What have you been listening to that has you in the position today? Is it negative or is it the echoes of God's voice? If it's negative, change what you hear. You are a kingdom citizen. Be kingdom-minded. Speak yes. kingdom. Think yes. kingdom. Yes. Isaiah 50 and 5 says, The Lord God has opened my ears, and I will not, yeah, I will not rebellious, neither turn back away. Wake up my ears, Lord, for I can hear right and speak right. God is giving some of us supernatural hearing aids. He's turning the volume up, and he's cleaning our ears out. In my closing, I want to let some of us know that sometimes all of us have something on the inside of us that no one else can do. You have a gift on the inside of you that to do for yourself is going to come from you. Yes. But are you willing to get rid of that deaf and dumb spirit? Are you willing to let it go so you can hear what it is? God has an assignment for each and every person in here. Yes. That deaf and dumb spirit causes us to miss God every day of our lives. It causes us to connect and agree with what the devil says that the things we should not agree with concerning our lives. I will no longer be dumb. I will no longer be deaf. The spirit of confusion will have no power to work on the inside of me. Follow the echoes of the voices of God. Yes. The voice of God. Just like the little boy, the voice of God comes to save your life. God wants your ear back. He wants your tongue back. He wants to change the course of your life. But he can't do it without your agreement. Will you agree tonight? Amen. 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 Come on. Good luck minister. Partly. Amazing. Minister Allison is coming at this time.
He quotes Isaiah 64 and 4, where Isaiah is in prayer, and he tells God that even back from ancient times, no one has seen where anyone or any other God, Lord HG, other than God himself, who takes care of those who love and wait patiently on him. To give some context, Paul was talking to the Corinthians about how our wisdom as humans would never compare to the wisdom of God and how in order for us to even begin to understand God's thoughts and motives, the Spirit of God has to reveal them to us and help us understand them. Yes. When thinking of unforeseen turnarounds in our lives and how vast the wisdom and love of God is, think of God speaking to the prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 and 5, where he says, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Or when Jesus tells his followers in Matthew 7 and 11, If ye being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more should your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask them? Or even in Psalms 37 and 25, when David says, I have been young and I am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed dead in the Paul tells the Corinthians that there is no comparison to what God has prepared for those that love him. Mm -hmm. And those scriptures all show that no matter what we think we know about God, God always has something waiting for us that is bigger than we could ever understand, nor could we even predict it. Mm -hmm. Last we were reminded of that again in Ephesians 3 and 20, when Paul is praying on behalf of the church of Ephesus, and he says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Or as we say, God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to his power that works in us. Yes. Yeah. 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 Come on. Yeah. Minister Allison, powerful. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Now, now we're going to hear from Minister Shania, she's going to come at this time. Give that praise for her. Bibles to John 1. And so, we got, we got John 1. 
It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version. Uh, and he says, the word of the Lord came to John the son of country. Uh, a minute Yeah. Get up, go to the great city of Nidia and preach against it because the evil has come up before me. John got up to flee to tarnish from the Lord's presence. He went down to Joppa, country. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And found a ship going to tarnish. He paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to tarnish from the, from the Lord's presence. And so, yeah, I don't know how this story goes. Jonah, he fleeing, he gonna get on the ship, and they be like, come on, somebody is up in here that don't belong here, all right? right? And Jonah's like, it is I, it is I. Um, <laughs> and from there, yeah, I'm the story, from there, it's, it's not a standard turtle, y'all, it's a whale. <laughs> to tell me, he said, I am sending you into the 
God and where you are created and made to be in. And so when I thought about that and just how the well stood as an incubator for Jonah, um, and it says he stayed three days and three nights. So apparently those three days and three nights serve a purpose to create in Jonah for his purpose plan of God's appointed time for him at this time. Y'all get me? All right. And so going a little further, um, as I was going back looking at the video for it, um, this particular sermon, another thing that uh, came to my attention, um, Pastor Jesus said this, uh, he says, come out the mouth of the well. Yeah. So, as I was thinking about that, I was like, okay, the well sermon is an incubator for Jonah. Jonah, he's, he's, you know, three days, three nights, he is that like he's adding up, kind of like he, he was like, I used to tell my kids this when they get angry, they was like, oh, what's the word? I can't even think about it. Power Rangers. Wait, you know what I'm talking about? Maybe morphing up. Yeah, yeah more Jonah was morphing up, basically. Come on. And so, Jonah couldn't leave the mouth of the well. He couldn't come at the mouth of the well until he morphed up, right? right. For yeah. that point in time where God wanted him. And so, I said all that to say this. Sometimes in our environment, um, and this is kind of what I got from the sermon. Um, sometimes in our environment, we need an incubator where we can sit, where we can kind of morph up to be where God pushes us to be. Because if we look at it, this where we are right now is an incubator for us all. And it's going to push us into whatever is next in our lives, whatever is next in our ministries, whatever is next in our marriage, whatever the case may be. It's going to push us into what we are doing next. So you can say this is your will, this is your incubator, whatever the case may be. Welcome, you are in the belly of it, you are in your incubator. And so I want to encourage you that as you are in your incubator, say I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out just because when I come out of this incubator, help me, Lord, help me to say it the way you're giving it to me. As I'm coming out of this incubator, I have to, ooh, help me. I have to be willing to give a yes. The yes it's almost like a right of passage. It's a right of entry. And so, the thing that Jonah lacked is a firm yes. Right. But he couldn't, he, he, it, that firm yes couldn't happen until he was in his incubator. Right. So therefore, help me, Lord. I, I hear you saying it, but help me verbalize it. Jonah was in his incubator, and he couldn't come out of it until it was a solid and firm yes. And luckily for Jonah, his farm yes was three days, three nights. But some of us, it's three years, three days. Oh, well, some, some of y'all, three days. But mostly three years, yeah. <laughs> or even longer than that. No judgment, it's okay. Mine well, was 24 years. You know, here I am, 24, I'm 25. So, yeah, hey, whatever. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But Jonah had to make a farm yes in that, in that setting. And so... When Jonah finally decided that he would say yes to God, the well released him. Yeah. And so it's almost like Jonah's yes was his rite of passage to remove himself from the mouth or the belly of the well. And so I said all this is your yes will be the key to get through the doors of the upcoming year. This is what I got from the sermon. Um, let your yes be firm. Don't, don't. Do not, do not, do not say do not. Do not be like Jonah and run from your incubator. Because the beauty of it is in the incubator. It so also did look for the research. An incubator when a baby is in the incubator, you know they have the lamp or whatever. It serves as a protection. 
Right. Like the heat, it, it serves a protection. It keeps the germs out and it also helps their um, skin develop and their organs develop. And when I think about that, I kind of think about back to I'm mixing it up now. Stay with me. I think about that summer where Pastor DJ under his shadow, your incubator is your shadow under, it's almost like you're under God's hand, under his shadow. And so in this season, don't be afraid to run from your incubator because that's where you're going to find God's presence. That's where you're going to find him at. That's where you're you're, you're going to hold on to, to his word the most, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 All right, wake up now, wake up. We ain't done. We ain't done. Amen. <laughs> and we give God praise for her. Come on, we got praise for Mrs. Shania. That incubator, that thing blessed me, girl. Oh, that was powerful. 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 We love her. She's so funny. <laughs> she is so funny. We love her. Last but not least, we give God praise for Mrs. Shaw Alexander. And she comes and closes this out for the MIT portion. We thank God for her. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So wonderful to see you all. Y'all look so beautiful. Um, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life, who's the head of y'all's life. Um, so wonderful to see you, Bishop Dietrich, and Prophetess Diana, giving honor to you, and Pastor Sherry, um, all the wonderful auxiliaries that represent them here, all the leaders, the elders, ministers. Um, it's a pleasure to stand before you. So, um, I've been given the privilege to talk about um, July. Um, July, um, as Bishop Dietrich spoke, um, it was the seventh month, the month of completion. Yeah. Um, yeah. More grace to complete tasks, more grace to get it. Yeah. Whatever your it is, um, you were graced to do it right. in July. So July was a month of messages on thy kingdom done. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Bishop Dietrich um, talked about thy kingdom done, let it be done. Um, you are what you eat, our daily bread. Um, the kingdom just showed up, um, walking agreement. Kingdom seeds, yep. Kingdom resistance, removing temptation. So just a couple of things um, that I'm going to take um, from um, a few of the messages, so y'all just hang tight with me, okay? Amen. All right. So when we were talking about thy kingdom done, um, we were talking about thy will be done in earth right. as it yeah. is yeah. in heaven. Yeah. Right. I don't know y'all were. Amen. Our ideas and opinions are different than God. We have been living beneath what God has for us. God's plans and visions for us are so big. And what we need is already done. We just need to manifest in it, pull it down from heaven. So what is the kingdom? It is God's mindset. It's his idea. So let's go to Matthew chapter 6, um, verse 33. All right. So it talks about the word says, I'm sorry. But seek ye first, first, the kingdom of God and whose righteousness? His righteousness. And some of these things, all of these things, all of these things shall be added unto you. Everything starts with God's mindset, the kingdom. Be concerned about the kingdom. Earthly things have no matter. We also discussed that the kingdom has a voice and language that we, Come on. the people yes. of God, need to use. Yes. Whatever Jesus have, has, we have. We have the same power and authority 
We are sons and daughters of God. So using the name of Jesus, so everybody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Using the name of Jesus, understand what authority and power you have. Y'all yeah. yeah. understand that. Y'all sure y'all got that. Y'all have authority in what? Power. Thy kingdom done, let it be done. Find out from him how we are supposed to react to this life we're living in. The kingdom is not a religion. God cannot be boxed into a certain denomination. And we need to ask ourselves, do we restrict God or help God off? That's good. Do we do that? He's not a limited God. Having the attitude of heaven reflects heaven. Our mind, speech, treatment of others should reflect heaven. How is your attitude? Focus, focus, focus. If we understood what heaven is producing, we would not be distracted. Save time, save energy, and just agree with what heaven says. Okay. So y'all repeat this, please. Y'all so nice to me. There's no limit with God. There's no limit with God. There's no limit in heaven. There's no limit in heaven. All right. All right. Pray the kingdom. The kingdom of God is, one, his focus. Two, his pleasure. Three, his assignment. Four, God's commitment. Five, his Perspective. Right. So now let's briefly go over. You are what you eat. <laughs> and some people know some of one of my favorite things to eat is macaroni and cheese. But something that's better than macaroni and cheese is the bread of heaven. Yeah. Yes. So much better. We have to have the word, our bread of Jesus. And we can't go through the day without having the word. We have to diligently eat, consume revelation, balance. The daily bread leads to stability and being unshakable. And a lot of individuals have talked to that already about us being shaken. We talk about the death of the spirit, right? We talk about becoming weak because we don't get our daily bread. We are what we eat. We need to spend intentional time replacing natural things with spiritual bread. So, guys, let's repeat this. I must unlearn this. I must unlearn this. And your this is whatever has been leading you, directing you, talking to you that is not the bread or the word of God. Do you remember the power you have? The word, the promise. The bread says, by his stripes we are healed. What the world says does not apply to the sons and daughters of God. That's y'all, right? That's us? Y'all agree with that? Okay. How will we know this if we don't eat the word of God? We need to eat, eat, eat the bread and eat the right food. Jesus says we have access to the bread. We have access to him. So we're going to go to John 6, um, 31 through 35, very briefly. Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Walking in agreement. 
it is time for king construction. Does the devil recognize you? Do the walls shake when you pray? The devil should see your agreement with God because the kingdom speaks. Are you going to talk about them, what the devil's done, what you've experienced, what you've seen or been through, or talk about him? Kingdom seeds, let's get up. There will always be seed time and harvest, and you will always have to take account for what you put out and for what you bring in. Mismanaged moments can kill your seeds. Right. Mismanaged moments can kill your seeds. We can have mismanaged seeds when we assume, think, or have the delusion that our way is the right way. But that way leads to an end. And according to Strong's Concordance in this verse, which is Proverbs 14 and 12, and also Proverbs 16 and 25, the end or reward, or reward is death, pestilence, or ruin. How many things are growing and your perspective is that the growth is God, but really it's a tear. Tears can talk are meant to distract, destroy, and choke out. Tears accuse you and can talk you out of what the kingdom has promised and said to you. So in closing, we have to remember to remove temptation in order to have kingdom resistance. Temptation is a door. It can be a heart issue. It's a tear and it tries to grow up with you. It leads you to believe it and being deceived that God is not enough. Ask yourself a question, who and or what is tempting me? Ask yourself. Request yourself. Tell yourself to say, Spirit, lead me. God's insight saves us. Remember our thoughts and ways are not his. Don't allow your flesh to win today. There is always bread for us to eat so that we can plant seeds that produce harvest. The kingdom does not have an expiration date and is full of everything we need. As kingdom citizens, we represent the fruit and harvest of God. Temptation does not have a final say with what we can have in our lives. The grace of God leads us beyond temptations and follows us as we walk in agreement. Amen. 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 Minister Shah, can we give God praise for all of the MIT that spoke on tonight? Come on, you all see elders and ministers, and we give God praise for them. Amen. Brother Chris Spearman, he's going to come now and give us a minister a dance. And then after that, I'm going to come and release the mantra for 2023. This has been a wonderful night. Amen, right? Amen. God has more in store. Things I've kept by the 
to be shining. Trying my best to be strong. On, Waiting on God and holding on. Just don't know
the links, I ask you to stand. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. It's in the name of Jesus that we are able to assemble here again for another year to see your goodness, your mercy. We thank you, God, for everything you've done for us, everything you've said tonight, everything you've spoken and demonstrated tonight through your people. We give you glory. Thank you for carrying us through year 22 and bringing us into this new year, 2023. Right now, although it's been a long night, we are not tired. We're not weary. We're not worn out. No, but God, we are strengthened even the more to hear what you have to say during this time, this hour, this moment. We thank you. As we, have, as we lay our right hand on our neighbor, we pray strength into them. We pray strength into them now in Jesus' name. That they won't miss anything that's been said. Anything that will be said on tonight. We pray for our online watchers. We cross the aisles tonight, God. And we pray strength in our brothers and in our sisters. We pray strength over the ushers and media and, and praise team and musicians. Those that have served all night and poured all night. We pray strength right now that they are strengthened even the more to hear what it is you have to say. This new word, this mantra, this, this catchphrase, this, this uh, your idea that you have for this year for them, God. We come up against any distraction tonight. We come up against the children. Maybe a distraction to, to the parents, God. We bind that and we send it back to hell. In Jesus' name, we come up against the wondering spirit, the mind, God. We thank you right now that you have our undivided attention. He comes to the most high. Because although our neighbor may not know what you brought us through, I know what you brought me through in year 22. And I'm grateful even the more. I'm not tired of you. I'm not ready to go home. I'm not ready to call it quits. You brought me through too many things that I only know about. That you only know about. Times I didn't want to live anymore. You were there. You caught me. Times I didn't want to do what you called me to do. But you encouraged me. You pushed me. They may not know, but you know. You know. So I pray for my neighbor. I release strength in the most sea. Power in kind of both side for this year, for the days ahead, for the days ahead, for the days ahead, for the days ahead, I lose. For the days ahead, for the days ahead. Tell your neighbor, you won't quit. No, you won't. It kind of both side. You won't give in and you will not give out. Jesus said, Peter, I pray for you. And when you come through the time of testing, reach back and strengthen your brother. But don't be the twisted, Peter. The enemy desires to seek you as wheat. The message translation said, the enemy, he wants to separate all of you from me. But I declare, and I decree right now, leader. I declare, and I decree right now, pastors. I declare, and I decree right now, singers, that you will not give in to the devil, and you will not give out to the devil. There's more for you to give. There's more for you to do. In the name of Jesus. There's a few more moments. We're not tired yet. The devil is a liar. We wouldn't be sleeping if we was at home anyway. The devil is a liar. We can go see time to the back shot. We can go to the back shot. It's going to be a, this year going to look different than last year. And this is how we know. Because you are different than last year. We can go see time to the back Yes, you are. I don't care what you feel like. I don't care still seeing the same things you saw. The devil is a liar. He's a liar. Replenish, restore. Rejuvenate. Revitalize your people. 
they had a hard year. Let's be real. You had a hard, challenging, concerning, confusing year. But God would allow you to go through for such a time as this. You made it through for a purpose. On purpose and for a purpose. With a purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Give me strength to release this word. Give me strength to release this year's mantra that you will have me to do. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this long. Thank you. I've got something for you. Seek 
you're gonna, you're gonna get revelation, you're gonna receive revelation. The more we talk about it, the more you pray about it, the more you study on it, you're going to uh it's going to change your life completely. Yes. Because you want to find out that any great and wonderful life-changing thing that's gonna happen to you in year 23 is up to you. Yes. Yes. It's not predicated upon nobody else. God tonight is going to erase excuses and erase us from placing blame on anyone uh, on another person's uh, saying that they are the reason that we're in the position that we're in. No. No. In, 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 in 2016, we talked about the year of results. That was our mantra in 2016. Uh, 2017, we talked about the year of acceleration. Man. And uh, 2018, we talked about the year of the promise. Mm. Yeah, in 2019, the year that uh, uh, God taught us about how to trust and adjust. Oh, powerful. 2020 was the year of it shall. Yeah. It shall. Uh, uh, Apostle Nate Holcomb said, these shells are loaded. They are loaded. Uh, 2021, the year of divine strategy. God is still been giving us strategies. <laughs> right? And then, of course, 22, uh, 2022 was the remix of time. Powerful, powerful what God has been speaking here at, uh, at ULC. And I could go through a whole lot. Uh, and talk about a whole lot, do a whole lot of preliminary stuff, but I'm just going to get right to it. That's okay with me. Let's Amen. get right to it. Amen. The Bible says, if you turn to Joshua chapter 24, and I, 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 I wanted to, and I'm going to read this from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, I'm going to get. I, I, I want you to go back and read it. I want you to go from uh, Joshua 21, the, the verse, verse. Just read the entire chapter. You're going to see here where Joshua is calling Israel, the people of God, to the carpet. My God. Joshua has been given the authority and the power uh, from God to tell them. Do you remember when God did when? Yeah. Do you remember when God brought you out? When God delivered you and when God kept you through 22 or 21 or 20. He, he brought them to the carpet and he said, yeah, and you read it, you read it, you read it. He said, uh, let me just read some of it. Let me read some of it. Because we got nothing to do. Let me read some of it. Uh, one says, Joshua assembled Verse 1, all the tribes of Israel up to him and summoned Israel elders. He summoned Israel elders, leaders, judges, and officers, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to, the, to all the people, this is what the Lord, of, uh, the Lord, the God of Israel says. And God begins to go down the resume of which he demonstrated to them. He says, long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham and Noah, uh, uh, lived beyond the Ephraim's river and worshiped other gods. But I took your father, Abraham, from the region beyond the Ephraim's river, led him throughout the land of Canaan, and multiplied his descendants. I gave him Isaac. And to Isaac, I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave the heel country of Seir uh, of Esau as a possession. Jacob and his sons, however, went down to Egypt. He says, I sent Moses and Aaron, and I defeated Egypt by what I did within it. And afterward, I brought you out. When I brought your fathers out of Egypt and you reached the Red Sea, come on, you remember, uh, the Egyptians pursued their fathers with chariots and horsemen as far as the sea. Your fathers cried out to the Lord. So he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and brought the sea over them. You remember that? Engulfing them. He says, your own eyes saw what I did to Egypt. After that, you lived in the wilderness a long time. Verse 8 says, later, this is God talking to them, reminding them, later I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived beyond Jordan. They fought against you. 
but I handed them over to you. You possessed their land and annihilated them before you. Balak, son of Zippor, king of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent for Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Instead, he repeatedly blessed you, and I rescued you from him. You then, God is talking. You then crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. Jericho's citizens, as well as the Amorites, the, the Perizzites, and, and Canaanites, and Hethites, and, and Jerusalemites, and all them type of ites, and Hebites, and, and Jebusites. He says, they fought against you, but I handed them over to you. I sent hornets ahead of you, and they drove out to two Amorite kings before you. It was not by your sword or bow. I gave you a land you did not labor for yeah. and cities you did not build. Yeah. Though you live in them, you are eating from the vineyards and the olive groves you did not plant. Mm. Verse 14, therefore, fear the Lord. And worship him in sincerity and truth. Get rid of the gods, little G, your fathers worshipped. Beyond the Ephraim's river and in Egypt and worship the Lord. Verse 15. But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourselves today. Which will you worship? The little G gods, your father's worship, beyond the Ephraim's river of the gods, little G of the Amorites, in whose land you were living. He says, he says, uh, then Joshua stepped up uh, and made the decision. He said, he said, as for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. Man. This year's mantra. It is the year of decision. Amen. Wow. That's great. Decision. Wow. And I would not be the man of God that God will call me to be if I didn't first tell you the consequence of making the bad, wrong decision. We'll get to the good part first. Because God is going to empower you. When, you. when you choose what he has chosen for your life, something miraculously supernatural is going to happen quickly this year. Based upon your decision. But God says, this is the year that you have to decide. You can no longer live in the balance of things. No, 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 no. If, if you're in a relationship and you know you're not supposed to be in it, Get out, make a decision to get out of it. Right. Stop living in the balance of things and, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And, and, and some of us have been in things five and 20 years all because of we have not made a decision. God right. said, do you, do you know, he said, he said, I need you to kind of cut down on praying when you pray for people uh, and, and, and trying to break cycles off people, break cycles. He said, do you know what cycles are? A decision. Sight of our decisions that, that, that haven't been made. It's a decision that has not been made. Deliverance is a decision. It's a decision. Whatever I'm to do this year and beyond, God said, just make a choice. Make a decision. Decide to do it. You want to come to church? Decide to come to church. If you want to be a giver, decide to be a giver. Decision. We no longer have the time to counsel those individuals that don't have their mind made up. Because we'll spend all of our time trying to convince you of something you should be already convinced of. Come on, come on. This year, this year, the year of 23 is the year of decision. God says it's time to decide. Shop, with, shop this with me. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. There's something. It's real simple. It's really simple. Make up your mind. This year, 
you must make up your mind and make it up quickly. No more being indecisive. Living in the balance of things. Okay? No more excuses. Just decide. In business, relationships, what have you, in ministry, make a decision to, uh, and decide. Watch this. I, 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 my, my, my ministry has came to an end with trying to convince people to come to church. Yeah. Not happening no more in Jesus' oh my God. name. Oh my God. I've made a decision, a decision to pour into those individuals that are open. You know how much poor I wasted in the, between the year of 20 and 22 uh, by pouring into things that had a on the top of it. Oh my God. Oh my God. And left me depleted or let those individuals that, 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 that needed the poor not getting as much of the poor as they needed because we were pouring into the wrong areas of ministry. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Right? right. right. I made a decision to follow God and to follow, not following my flesh or my emotion or my love for people, uh, not uh, things that I want to see come to fruition out of their lives. But you know, you can't want things for people that they don't want for themselves. Right? And you'll spin your wheels trying to get them to see all of the things that they're missing. They already see it. They know. They, we all know. Jonah, we all know what God, we may not know the full details, but we do know something that God has told us to do. We know. We got instructions. We got instructions. We got instructions. All you have to do was between you and walking in success and walking in the power of God, make a decision. Stop saying you're depressed. Decide not to do it. Stop saying you have anxiety. Decide not to have it. It's as simple as we say. We say um, 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 when you have um, when, when, uh, when the pollen season comes, and we say this: "Oh, my sinuses are acting up. My, my. Mm -hmm. I don't have sinus trouble. Right. Right. I decided this year that when that stuff starts flying off them trees, I ain't got it. Yeah. I made a decision." And I know the supernatural power of God upon this month of this year that whatever I decide in his name is according to his will for my life, it shall be. Yeah. And it can't be anything else. Yeah. We will not be broke this year living from paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. But we'll also be givers in the house of God. Come on. Why? Because I decided to be a giver. I decided to sow my way out of debt. I decided to sow my way out of poverty. I will not live wondering how month the month is going to look. I decided. I decided. I decided to have a good relationship with my wife. In regards to how she treats me, I decided to have a good relationship with her. Because I can't make a decision for her. I mean, we good. I'm just saying. <laughs> You can do no work. No, I'm I decided. I decided to go after God like never before, not being distracted by the faces and attitudes of people. I decided. I'm going to try to ministers catch it. Catch it. Make a decision. God will empower you. I'm serious. God will instruct, God will give you so much uh, 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 power and strength and so many supernatural things will happen. We just got to make a choice. Why ain't nothing happening for me if you haven't decided anything? Why have not I started this? Make a decision to start. Let's, let's move forward. He said, the people, uh, 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 Joshua said, after he we called them of everything God has done. He said, you know God has done all these wonderful great things for you. He said, choose ye this day. Whom you going to serve? That is a question. That's what we like questions. That is a question that God is directly asking everybody in here tonight and those that are watching online. Make a decision tonight. No more will you be able to, I'm going to do it when I get ready. I'm going to do it when I feel like it. I need to get this out of my system. I'm going to do this today and stop the next two months. No, you need to make a decision today. Right now, your life is on the line. Your family's life is on the line. Make a decision today. He said, he said ask for me. 
I want you guys to know I, 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 I'm standing uh, uh, with the voice of the Lord on behalf of the voice of God, reminding you and telling you these things. He said, well, I want you to know right here and right now in front of everybody, me in my house, we will serve the Lord. We have no other choice but to follow that God that just said all these things. I know he's done all these things. I've seen the Red Sea. I've seen all these things happen. You know what God did for you in year 22 and, and 21 and 20. There are some things that don't nobody know that God did for you. And why haven't you chosen him? We choose him on Easter. We choose it on New Year's watch night service. Come on. Come on. We, 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 we choose the genome in January. February, we can't be found. <laughs> because you have not made a decision. Right, right. It's like you can go in and out. You have not made a decision. Let me tell you something. All of you going to the gym in January, don't get in our way. <laughs> you ain't going to be that long, so don't get in our way. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I ain't happy with you, <laughs> Make a decision. I'm going to eat right. Monday, I'm going to eat right. No, decide now. Right, right. Do it tonight. I'm not going to I hop a waffle house. No. Lost y'all. All right. You good. Come on. He's still on this. Ain't nothing wrong with this. Just listen. Or, or some of those um, eggs y'all should have ordered from Pastor Sherry. You should have ordered it. She would have brought you some food. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We got to go. <laughs> Joshua said in verse 15, he said, but if he doesn't, he told them, after all I just told you, after all I just showed you, after all I just said to you, he said, if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, wow. don't. No. No. If it doesn't please you, don't. If you don't want to sing in the choir, don't. You don't want to be on crazy, don't. You don't want to be on the usher, don't. Media, don't. Because we're not calling and doing check-ins no more. No. You've made a clear conscious decision to not operate and function. That is now, as, as that, that, that thing said a couple years ago, it's above me now. It's between you and God. You made a decision to not live holy and righteous right. before Him. Deliberately. Joshua said, he said, he said, he said uh, the God your father worship before the rights of the God and the rights. He said, ask for me. And my family, we will worship the Lord. Yeah. Listen to this, verse 16. The people replied, we will certainly not abandon the Lord to worship other gods, little G. Uh -huh. For the Lord our God brought us, they begin to recall now, uh, brought us and our fathers out of the land of Egypt, out of a place of slavery and performed these great signs before our eyes. He also protected us along the way. We went and among all the people whose land we traveled through, the Lord drove out before us all the people, including the Amorites who live in the land. We too will worship the Lord because he is yes. our God. Watch this. I'm almost done. But Joshua told the people, you will not be able to worship the Lord because he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions and sins. If you abandon the Lord and worship foreign gods, you can't worship two gods at the same time. You can't have this, right? You can't have this and that at the same time. He said, he said, he said, he said, if you abandon the Lord and worship foreign gods, he will turn against you, harm you, and completely destroy you after he has been good to you. They shouted, no. The people answered, Joshua, we will worship the Lord. Watch this, 22. Joshua then told the people, you are witnesses against yourselves. That you, yourselves, have chosen to worship the Lord. We are witnesses, they said. He says, then get rid of your foreign gods that, that, that are among you and turn your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. Joshua said, 
Today, as you're making that declaration, as you, as you are deciding to follow Big G, the God of heaven and God of earth, says you all are witnesses for yourselves. Hold yourselves accountable. Yes. Yes. Hold yourselves accountable. I need that accountability partner. Are you two? Well, no. They need an accountability partner. Hold yourself accountable to, to the decision with, or with the decisions you made concerning the things of God. Right. When you made or make your decision tonight in whatever area of ministry that you're going in with a uh, business or what have you, something in, on the inside of you should turn when you're not doing it. There should be a level, but I'm finding out, Pastor Sherry, there's no conviction in church anymore. And the only way that conviction can be alive on the inside of a person is that they are walking and following God, or following his ways, and have a relation with God. And, and therefore, people do think they have no conviction of Go up on the pastor. They don't even count no more. Back in the day, we wouldn't even play certain music right by the church. Now we bump it at church. We smoke it in the parking lot. We drink it in the parking lot. And have the audacity to come in smelling like it in the church. Make a decision. Nobody got time to pull your end up every Sunday. Every. What about the people in the street that we gotta, we gotta help? He was talking to believers. Those that have seen the power yes. demonstrate, people have a relationship with him. They have seen God work. Yes. All of us in here have seen God work. Yes. I know every now and then you may be a little encouraged, a little strengthened, okay, but every day, you can go back in your mind and remember what he, what he did at the Red Sea of your life. When, when he did, when he turned water into wine, turned some things around in your life. You can remember, don't nobody, can't nobody remember what God has been to you like you can remember what God has been and done for you. Nobody can. Shout, nobody. Nobody. He says, the people, he says, you are witnesses today. You be a witness. The Bible says in John 5, when I make a decision, Jesus walked up on this man that had been laying in this pool for many years. And he said, man, do you want to be healed? Make a decision to crawl your end to that water and be healed. But the first thing that, that, that guy did, what he do? Came up with excuses. Every time I would go, somebody would step on me and talk about me and laugh at me and all these there are no excuses, no anymore. Come on, come on. No, he said, make a decision to, to, to low crawl. It is a low yeah. crawl to, to the water. Make a decision to do whatever it takes to get deliverance. Yeah. Just decide. Yeah. Just decide. Yeah. It's just like when you, you got to, you, you, when you get up in the morning or when you drive your car, you decide, you have to, uh, you know, you decide to put gas in your car in, 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 in the midst of rain, sleet, and snow and stuff. You know, that car needs gas to run. Yeah. If you don't make a decision to put gas in your car, what are you going to be doing? Walking. You're going to be walking. And then now you're going to be forced to put gas in your car. You're going to be forced to make a decision. We're in a time right now that God, or you're in a place in your life right now, don't be... Uh, allow God to put you in a place that you're going to be, have to be forced to make a decision. Right, right. Make it right now while you're here. Right, right, right. There's no pressure attached to it. Just, just make the decision and you and God just watch to see how that thing unfold and watch how God bless your life. But you got to decide. Yeah. Yes. You got to decide in God. Last week, last week, last week. You remember, you remember, you remember when, when, well, I talk, I teach that later. I teach that later. Uh, uh, the benefit of when you decide and do things the way God has called you to do and you decide what he has decided for your life, you do remember uh, uh, that, that there were three boys, three men that, that made a choice, a decision to serve God even with the threat of being thrown in fire. Right, right, right. 
and, and, and even with their threat of being thrown in fire, their decision did not waver. It did right. not change. They said, we ain't even careful to answer this question. We, we're going to tell you. And it, it says, our God is able to deliver. But if he does it, we still will not serve your golden image of your God. If they made a decision to serve the big G, not a little G, what decisions do you have to make tonight, people of God? Come on. What, if, what, what decisions... What miracle, what blessing, what breakthrough is just waiting on you to just to decide? That's it. All the crime will leave because you made a decision. You, you, you made the right choice to get up and do what God has called you to do. So this year, as we continue to travel through this mantra and gain revelational insight as it relates to what God and how this word fits for your life, this church, your family, I want you to be open and I want you to be ready. Be ready to make a decision. Amen. God says, I'm empowering my people. That when they, when they decide what I've already decided for them, they are going to see supernatural things happening miraculously. I'm talking about overnight, like Amos. Now, yes, indeed, it won't be long. God is great. They're going to happen so fast your head's going to swim because you decided that it won't be long. That things are going to happen so fast your head will swim. It is a decision you have to make. We can quote it. We can read it. We can sing it. But if you have not decided, will not happen. Yes. The definition of death. A decision simply means a conclusion mm -hmm. or a resolution reached mm -hmm. after consideration. Good. It's a conclusion, a resolution reached after a consideration. Count the cost and make a decision. Yes. This year, our leadership is going to change. Yes. Because I decided. Yes. 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 Can't talk about it now, but it has. Because I decided in the way that God will have or what has already been decided for this house. Right. It's, 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 it's some other decisions that we're going to have to make in order to take this ministry to the next level here. Because what we did in 22, we can't do it in 23. Right? right? right. We've got to do things a little better. A walk in more excellence. Amen. Yes. I need every auxiliary leader to decide that your auxiliary is going to walk in nothing but excellence. Yes. Not a buddy system. See. Not friendship. Right. Uh -huh. None of those things even matter in the kingdom. But no, that it yes. just that my auxiliary is operating in excellence. Yes. And every person, every leader of this house have to have that same spirit. We all have to decide together yes. that we're going to be a help to this church yes. and not a healer. Yes. We're not going to be a liability. Yes. Right? Yes. Not going to be a liability. Like my attitude. We have to decide that I'm not going to allow my attitude to be what makes somebody else stumble. Right. Come on. Because yes. we got some bad attitudes. Yes. Oh. MITs, no, I was so hard on them uh, the other night. And I told them, I said, I don't even apologize because when it comes to ministers and leadership, I, I give no grace to them. No, 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 no. I have limited amount of grace because you said God called you to this. You said God told you to do this. You said you walked up crying. You said And so, and because you said it, I assume you decided, you agreed with it, now let's do the work. Right. No, you can't miss church. No, you can't sit down. No, you cannot be a tither and still expect to be acknowledged as a minister or leader in this house. No, you're robbing God. No, that's why. No! I decided that from the pulpit to the back door, we're going to be in perfect alignment with God. I need some help. Thank you. Perfect alignment with God. Perfect alignment with God. Make some mistakes? Absolutely. We will make some mistakes. Uh, but we, we, we have, a, I've decided to get back up and keep moving. And keep moving. We have a lot to cover 
as it relates to this mantra. I'm going to let you go, but this is the year of decision. One decision you can make tonight that will change your life forever. One shift in your mind can change your life forever. One. One. One decision away from breakthrough. From your business going from here to there. One decision. One decision. You just get up out of bed and pray at 5 a.m. in the morning and be committed to it. One. One decision to be committed to the things of God as opposed to the things of the world. One decision. One. And God is going to do not just for you, but for everybody that's connected to you. Yeah. Every person that's connected to you will be a beneficiary of your obedience. Yes. There are many, and you put your things up, you get what you're saying. There are people, all of you that are in this place and are watching online. You're powerful. You are anointed. And you've been called by God. Do not allow the enemy to stop you or to rob you from obeying God fully. Insecurity, all these other things that we can name or give a name to. Decide to reject that notion from the devil. And accept what God has said and spoken over your life. This year in Jesus' name. And I know that 22 was challenging for many of us. It was challenging. But you made it. You made it through. You made it through. You made it through. And just like this year, it will have its own set of challenges. You will, they will. It will. But you're going to make it through that as well. Because you decided to. Now, the only difference between this year and last year, this year may, you may go through a little bit easier than last year because your decisions will be different. Right, right. Amen. Yeah. You're going to decide God's way yes. and not the flesh or the panic or the anxiety. Yeah. You're going to do things the way God wants you to do. And you, could you just lay your hand on your heart? God, I speak it to every person in this place. That for every heartache, every headache they can do it in the last three years. I say three years. That this year will be the year of repayment. This will be the year of the harvest of the seeds they've sown previously. The year of rejuvenation. The year of rest. This will be the year, God, that your people will take an exhale. That you will allow them to catch their breath. I speak to every pastor that's watching and that's here that the Lord will allow you to catch your breath. Every leader that's been working and you've been working and toiling and working and serving and working, every elder, you've been working and working and serving and serving and working and working and serving. I pray that this the year that you will catch your breath. You will catch your breath. That you will, uh, that, that you will give yourself permission to exhale. Exhale in Jesus' name. This will be the most, I prophesy, this will be the most fruitful year you've seen since you've been alive. Because you have made a decision to partner with God. You've made a decision to agree with God and to do things His way. You've made a decision. You've made a choice. You've made a choice. As you are all witnesses here tonight, you are your own witness. Right now, I ask you, pray to the Lord. Make a new covenant, make a vow to Him. In whatever area of your life that you know you need to go and repair and fix, do that now in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, God is going to, He's going to take you to places you've only dreamed. Supernaturally, Spiritually and naturally. He's going to take you there. In Jesus' name. I speak and pray. And uh, to Pastor Sherry. That this will be the most fruitful year you've seen. In your life. In your life. I speak to every hurt. Every broken place. Every place. That the enemy tried to kill and destroy you. I speak. I 
I speak to that strong woman that you've always exemplified and, and always been an example of. That you will be strengthened even more. Lost her mom one month. A few months later, her father. But you stayed strong. When you transition after transition, heal after heal, valley after valley, but you stayed strong. And I pray that right now, that be, because of the strength and because of your obedience, even while being challenged, that yeah, the whole this year. You will see why it had to go the way you want. And you will look back at it and say, it was worth it all. It was worth it all. It was worth it all. I pray for the word that's on the, on, that's on the inside of you. I pray for the music that hasn't been written that you will put to paper and record. I pray right now for the album be manifested in Jesus' name. Decide to write it. Decide to record it. Decide to build it. Decide right now that this is the year that many books will come out of you in Jesus' name. That this is the year. Those things that have been seemingly like intimidating will not be intimidating anymore. That you will give birth to them. I pray for every musician in here, every songwriter in here, that you will put out good, clean, healthy music this year that's going to bless the world. I pray for Jamero's new uh, CD that's coming out that's already finished. I pray that it will reach the masses in Jesus' name. All you have to do is decide it's going to reach the masses. Decide it's going to be over the airway. Decide it's going to be on the Word Network and TV and all these things. All you have to do is make a decision. And I'm not going to stop until I see what I decide by way of God. We'll pull the I speak to this church, young elders. I speak to this church right now that nothing will be missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in Jesus' name. That we will have people's time, their talent, and their treasures, God. That they will be willingly giving. They'll be willingly serving. They will be willingly showing up. They'll be willing, uh, living, uh, being evangelists for this ministry. I thank you, God, that we won't have to chase nobody down. We won't have to do all those types This very Sunday is the birthday of ULC. This is year eight for this church. Right now, today, January 1st. This is year eight. First Sunday in January. This is year eight right now. But what we dealt with in year one, we won't see it again. Year two, we won't see it again. Year five, we won't see it again. This is a year of new. Expand and swell this house. Not to have numbers, but to have workers. Though then will serve you with no compromise. Every business owner, live up your right hand. I pray for every business owner that this will be the year you decide that I have a long time million dollar business and that I'm going to work it until I see it. I'm not going to be distracted. I'm not going to compare my business to all this social media craziness. No, but I have decided to partner with God and I am going to get the fruit that, that, that comes with this business. I'm going to do and see everything that God has already. I won't be lazy. I won't be procrastinating, no. But I will get up and work it. But I decided to. In Jesus' name. Every uh, minister, every elder, every leader, lift your hand. I speak. That we won't be wishing washing. The wash is over. By the time the little old shop, but we will be strong and we will be stable in the Lord. I have decided. To go all the way with you, Jesus, and to do exactly what you called me us to do in Jesus' name.
in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. As elders are coming and they're going to prepare the, uh, the communion, we're going to do this and we're going to be dismissed on this. Time for communion. Amen. I am a shadow. We speak to our school. Our school will multiply this year. It will multiply. The other provider got the instructions. If he didn't give you, did you give him the instructions? Okay. He'll give you instructions on what to do. And so, this is the year that the school will, and, and here's the thing, guys. This school is already multiplied. Like we, we probably can get ready to sign up three schools this week. Thank you. Like this is really growing. It's really growing. It's because of the love of you guys show and the attention you guys. Like I speak to him, just be three, it'll be some all around the world in different countries. That 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 ministry international institute by way of ULC will be available, made available to people all over the world. Agree with me with it. Amen. I decided. I decided. I decided. I decided I'm gonna buy a house this year. I decided. I decided. I have two houses. One here and one somewhere else. I decided. That's how you do it. If Tyler Perry can have a landing strip built on his property. And some of our churches all over the world. Hey man, you can bring it to come. Uh, actually, you can just get from there. Just serve the people. Just serve the people. Amen. 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 We're getting ready to get over. We want to do this before we leave. We want to have a meeting. Thank you so much for being with us on tonight and hanging out with us this long. We appreciate your time and your presence. It has made the difference. You will see you guys are the best. Thank you so much for, for, for choosing the church as opposed to other things. Uh, we really appreciate you. <clears throat> we won't hold you much longer. But again, we will not have service on tomorrow. Um, and so that's why we're doing this now. Amen. Can I get one more yoga? We got another train we can get and do it a little faster. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. this on second Sunday and with our um, first of the year uh, meetings I'm going to talk more in depth about what the month of means um, as the month but we'll try to handle it all in January between January and the middle of the world uh, really complete meeting with all the auxiliaries but you're going to get a good idea of how important it is for you to make a decision make a decision Either you're going to be happy or sad. Make a decision. Yeah. It's real simple. Make a decision. Either you're going to complain or praise. It's a decision. It is a decision. We have everybody? Have everybody? Amen. If you would be so kind to stand with me. I will give our uh, minister to turn to the microphone and we'll have her to pray when I'm done. I'm going to be coming from Luke 22 and 15. And he said to them, we desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, 
I will not anymore eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Verse 17 says, And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Verse 19. And he took bread and gave thanks. Ten seconds, can you give God thanks? God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for your life. We thank you, God, for your sacrifice. We thank you, God, for everything you've done for us, God. We thank you, God, for rescuing us and saving us, delivering and healing us. We thank you, God, for taking the beating and the bruises for us in our lives. We thank you, God. We thank you for everything you can do just for me. We just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, God. Took the bread and gave thanks and break it. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. You may eat. Likewise, also the cup at the supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Holy. Which is shed for you for a moment. Can you just thank him for his blood? Woo! We thank you for your blood. Oh, we thank you, God, for your cleansing blood, your saving blood. We thank you, God. Thank you. Which is shed for you. You may and now minister to Tony she's going to come up front she's going to come and she's going to pray you can come and she's just going to pray over this and then I'm going to dismiss us just pray. Say nothing this time. Right, right, right. No. 
But, but I pray that he kills that emotional demon right there anyway. Right. But he won't have to post it. But when you do, because God, God says, I'm going to dry it and make it die. Because he wants us to get there. If there's any person in this place that do not know the Lord Jesus, you can come down and be saved. If it's you right now and you want to give your life over to the Lord, you can come down and you can be saved. If you're in this building and you don't have a church home, this is a good church for you to plant your feet. Come on. If you're here and you want to join or be a part of this ministry, you can do so now. I think there were about five people that graduated the other night for new members class. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Congratulations to new members class. Thank God for you. We're ready to put you to work. Amen. But if you're in this place and you want to join and be a member or watching online, you can be a member tonight in Jesus' name. All right, so if you have a gift, a seat, you can bring that now. Yeah, uh, Pastor Cheryl, will you have anything? Usually every year, you, you leave us with something. something. Every year. Yes. You're loaded. Like you, you just, every year you have something and you always supernaturally uh, say something. But, uh, before you, honey, you have something you want to pop it? You have something to release and say? Happy birthday, UFC! Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. You can stand right there. If you got a gift to see, if you, if you didn't do it electronically, you can bring that now. You can bring that now. And God bless you. We love you. I'm excited about this year. I'm excited to see the fruit of your decision because trust me, you will see the fruit quickly of the decisions you make. You're going to see the fruit based off of what you made, the decisions you made tonight. You're going to see that fruit quickly. Whether it's praise or attitude, we're going to see it. We're going to see it. I pray you stay on the Lord's side. Pastor Cheryl, will you just come and release it? What I heard in the spirit was what he says unto you, do it. Yes. What he says unto you, do it. Yes. And God is saying what he says unto you, do it. Yes. Not something similar to it. Yes. Not something yes. like it. That's right. Don't add to it. Don't take away from it. Right. Don't discuss your opinion about it. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. When he asked, my flesh said, no, I don't have anything to say. And immediately the Holy Ghost said, whatever he says unto you, do it. When Mary said that to the people at the wedding, right. Right. the water was turned to wine. Right. And if you do whatsoever he says, say. you will see yes. the miracle working power of yes. God. I hear God say in your individual life, he says collectively and corporately, whatever he says to you, do it. If you notice, they didn't discuss it. They didn't say this doesn't make any sense. Why are we putting water in the water pots? We ran out of wine. We need no water. The same time for water. They did discuss it. Whatever he said unto them, they did it. And that is what I heard God tell me to tell you. Yes, and especially if I may pass the ministers. Please. Please. Come on. Glory to God. Whatever he says to you, do it. You will never miss if you just do it. Don't try to do what the other ministers do. Yeah. Don't try to get the response the other ministers got. Yeah. Just do whatever he says unto you. Do yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. My God. Come on. My God. I'm sorry, but this is MIT night. Yes. And the bottom line is, you are not so anointed that your anointing is going to go above what the prophet said. Right, right, right. right. It's just not happening. No. I don't care how anointed you are. I don't care how anointed you have been in another place. Come on. Yeah. Glory to God. And I don't know who that was for, but I know it was God. See, sometimes we're used to functioning at a certain level in another way in another place. This is not that. All right. All right. This is not that. 
And so whatever he says unto you, do it. Your ministry will go to another level if you just do it. Somebody shout, amen. Happy New Year to Thank you, Pastor Shield. We receive that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh, everyone had an opportunity to give, but we're good. Amen. 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 We get ready to let you go. Amen. You, Pastor Kaderis, is going to come. He's going to pray over the offering, and then he's just going to wish you Happy New Year and close us out. Y'all give this, my guy. Give him a hand clap. Thank the Lord for all our eyes have seen and all that our ears have heard. Let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you've done on this evening, Lord God. We thank you for being present with us, Lord God, and never leaving us, Lord God. We thank you for our word for this year, Lord God. The year of decisions, Lord God. We got some decisions to make this year, Lord God. We know you're going to present us with many different opportunities on this year, Lord God. And we're ready to follow you wholeheartedly, Lord God. We leave everything behind, Lord God. We, we leave everything that's that's went on this past year. We leave it all there, Lord God. And we press forward towards everything that you have for us this year, Lord God. We look forward to saying yes to everything that you show us, Lord God. We look forward, Lord God, to saying yes, I will walk, Lord God. We look forward to being strengthened as we go, Lord God. Although our eyes may not see the totality of everything that you're hand will show us uh, as we go, Lord God, but we know we will have faith and we will walk as you lead, Lord God. We know that as we are in your presence and as we follow your lead, we will always be safe. We will always be protected. We will always be provided for. We will always see everything that your mouth has said, Lord God. So, Lord God, we look forward to this journey with you this year, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for our bishop. We thank you for him being open and willing to receive your word for our lives this year, Lord God. We thank you for our prophetess on this, on this day, Lord God. We thank you that her ears incline to your mouth, Lord God, to, to speak your word to us, Lord God. I pray for each and every one of us, Lord God, for our hearts to be willing to accept the words that are spoken in this house as we go forward this year, Lord God. We pray for unity this year, Lord God, and we may be able to walk together, Lord God, not having any troubles, any dysfunctions, any dissension, Lord God. We cast all of that down now, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, that as we leave this place, Lord God, never from your presence, that you will protect us, that you will keep us, that you will continue to speak to us concerning the decisions that we will have to make this year, Lord God. I pray that you would bless our offering on tonight, Lord God. I pray that you would bless all of those who had it to give, Lord God. I pray that you would bless those that didn't have but had the heart and the desire to, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that even in our giving, we're learning more and more about the principle of seed time and harvest, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you will ignite the spirit in those who don't have the spirit or the willingness to give. I pray that you will ignite that within them, Lord God, as they see those of us who do do that. And the, and the harvest from those things, Lord God. Lord God, I say Happy New Year to yes. each and every one of the individuals yes. here. And I, I truly think that Happy New Year is a prophecy in itself. Yes. This will be a Happy, happy New Year, year. Yes. all throughout yes. this year. That is a prophecy. So we all speak this on today. Happy, happy New Year, year, Lord God. We love you, God. We thank you, God. And we say amen. You are this